Hello everyone, it's Lindsay and today I'm back with another process using the May supplies or May kit from Freckled Fawn. I know we're into June, but I was trying to give some space with everything going on and I had this all geared up for this last weekend and it just wasn't the right time. So we are sitting down and still playing with May supplies. I will have the June unboxing coming out very soon for you guys. That kit is currently available, so I will link that down below um, as well if you want to check that out. So I am journaling in my little A5 notebook. And this is the one where I do just little personal documenting just for me, just my milestones, things that I'm enjoying, uh, things like that. And so I'm going to be brave today and I'm going to be documenting some of my weight loss journey. I really did not think that I was going to share these photos, <laughs> but I'm doing it. So that's what I'm going to be documenting. Um, this is about, I think, three weeks or four, three weeks between these sets of photos. So I'm going to be documenting these. And so I pulled out a variety of things from the May kit and I've done some prep uh, already. I had some floral dyes and so I just tested out, die cut them from some of the papers from the six by eight kit. And I'm going to be using these as well as some distress inks matched with the pattern papers and just kind of put together a pretty simple little layout using some of my little leftover bits from May. So let me go ahead and put you guys on fast forward and we'll put this uh, layout together. All right, so I'm going to start with a piece of cardstock and I'm going to ink this up with some distress inks. I'm going to die cut the base images from these dies uh, from this. So I have pine needles here. I'm going to use seedless preserves and broken china. And this is a pretty porous cardstock, so I don't get a super smooth blend, but that's okay. I don't mind the texture. If you want a smoother blend, I would suggest using like watercolor paper or maybe just, I think Distress, like Ranger does a cardstock for Distress inks. You could use that, but I am using just regular Distress inks this time around. They have a little bit deeper, richer color than the oxides do, and I wanted it to be a little richer since the colors of this kit are a little more rich. So I'm gonna do these base layers for these florals as well over here. This is in the Seamless Preserves. Uh, these dyes will be linked down below for you guys if they're still available. I know there's tons and tons of different uh, floral die cuts out there that you could use as well. So here, just going in with Broken China and I'm just using the die itself as kind of a guide to make sure I have enough of it inked up uh, before I run this through. So you do want to make sure that this is 100% dry before you die cut it. Um, if you don't do that, it will kind of tear and you won't get a nice clean cut with your dies. So you do want to make sure you heat set your ink, especially when you've done a lot of inking like I did here. And then I'm just using a little bit of washi tape to hold down those dies. And then I'm going to run that through my manual die cutting machine. So now I can start assembling. Again, this top piece of the florals was cut using some of the 6x8 papers from the May kit. And I'm just taking some liquid adhesive and using my finger. Uh, you could also attach some double-sided adhesive to the back of the paper before you run it through your die cutting machine. I just didn't, I didn't think of that ahead of time. Uh, this one's a little bit fussy to get lined up. I end up fighting with it quite a bit, but I love the contrast between the ink and then you have that fun little pop of pattern on the top. And that's another great way to use up your paper scraps um, or maybe a pattern that is not necessarily a pattern that you would find yourself using in a big project or a big layout. It's nice for small die cuts like this. So I'm going to let that dry underneath a block and then I pulled out these washi strips and I love this one that says be you not them so I'm going to add that to the bottom of the page and really what is super awesome about those washi strips is they perfectly fit at the bottom of an A5 page I mean perfect it was amazing. So I'm going to pull out this uh, purple one as well. I'm trying to kind of stick to purple, blue, and green, and I will have a little pop of yellow uh, on this layout. So now I can kind of start positioning things where I think that I'm going to want them. I'm not really doing any journaling of any sort, so I can really fill in um, the page with these images. So on the left-hand side was taken... Uh, May 6th and the right hand side was taken May 26th. 
All right, so now I have some number dies that I pulled out of my stash, and I'm gonna cut those out of that grid pattern paper. And uh, I, those are my weight. I know it's not about what the scale says, but that is one way that I do keep track. Um, and so I am documenting those numbers. And I'm just, I'm gonna set them aside for a minute until I figure out exactly how I want to lay them on there because they are like white on white, <laughs> basically. And so I need to do something with them uh, to help them stand out from the background. Um, so in the meantime, I'm just going to adhere things down. I love that the chipboard are stickers. So you just pull back your sheet and they're ready to go. Chipboard can be a little tricky sometimes getting an adhesive um, that holds on that heavy element. So I love when they come as a sticker. That's really helpful. And then just using some liquid adhesive on the die cuts. Um, you'll see me bounce it back and forth between liquid and tape. The liquid allows me to kind of wiggle and move things if I need to. And then I had pulled out these enamel dots. Those are actually from February, but I wanted to pull in a little bit of that yellow. And so I added those to the center of those floral die cuts. So here we're back to fussing with the numbers. I kind of want to incorporate the labels, but the sizes weren't quite what I wanted. So at this point, I'm putting down this yellow label thinking that I'm going to do some journaling in that spot. But I end up just using that as a base underneath the number die cuts there. And then I go over and grab the labels from February's kit because uh, they have this yellow one in here as well. So we're going to pull that in. So it's just a little hint of yellow on the page just in a few places. I really love that there's enough colors in the color palette each month that you could you know, easily use all of them, but you just by picking two or three completely changes kind of the look of what a, the project that you're doing um, with whatever colors that you pick from that palette. So if you look back at my project from earlier in May, um, it just has a very different feel because of the colors that I used. So here I'm going in and adding those numbers. I'm just using a glue pen um, to attach those. And then I will pull out a slick writer pen. These are um, great for writing over photos or any slick surfaces like these uh, cardstock stickers. And I'll just outline the numbers and that really helps make them stand out and also brings a little bit more black since my clothes are black. So I needed to bring some more black onto the layout. I'm going to go ahead and use my uh, date stamp and just stamp out the dates that the photos were taken. And then as a finishing touch, I am going to add some ink splatters. This is really chaotic and messy. I know that these can be scary for some people, <laughs> but this is some of the prep that I do. So making sure that I cover my photos because I don't want any paint on my photos, making sure I have plenty of, you know, the surface covered underneath my notebook and you get different shapes and different sizes and different patterns of splatters depending on the brush. So try different brushes, short and stiff bristles, long and floppy, big and fluffy. They'll all give you different uh, results. You just need to play around. This one gives you very chaotic, all over the place uh, splatters. Very, very, very uncontrolled. So, but it worked out and ended up being okay. So there's a look at the finished layout. Everything will be linked down below over at Freckled Fawn for you. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave those down below. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed. And until next time, thank you so much. Bye-bye.